Good morning from Walla Walla, Washington. Here I am standing in front of the Moore Chick Bar. And uh, I thought I'd do a little bit more uh, of an introduction to the machine and uh, bore a hole and go through some of the basics of, of uh, using a Moore Chick Bar. Um, there's uh, never been very much uh, on the more Jake Boring machine or really much on any uh, Jake Boring machine on the internet forums because the users of them have been bullied off. And I don't know why that is, but there's some kind of a jealousy uh, that went on. Uh, I, I can't explain why. Um, Maybe because uh, the operators of jig boards made more money. And it seemed like maybe they had an easier time um, at work. But uh, one of the things about the machine is you got to slow down a little bit and uh, pay uh, close attention to details if you're going to get the most out of it. Now, a lot of the videos I've done earlier are a good precursor to using this machine, such as uh, making your own boring bars and cutters. And uh, I'm gonna punch a hole with uh, a bar that I made. I don't know if I've got it in the head yet or just where it is, but we'll get it located and uh, we'll do some preliminary look at the machine. And uh, I'll take the, uh, well, I'll, I'll demonstrate the uh, lift in the head and how that works. So the vertical adjustment on the machine is with the spider wheel here. Let's see if I can rotate that over a little bit so you can see it. I think you can see it. If I get out of the way, here's the spider wheel. And here's the locking clamp here. So you loosen the locking clamp and then you can position the head, see? Okay, I'll clamp that down, and when you use this clamp, you want to use the same pressure and not too much. And uh, to get used to the machine, it's advisable to put a, a dial indicator on, on a flat surface, like horizontal, and work the clamp and see what happens if you get it too tight. You'll find that it distorts. So there's just all these small little things that you gotta look after and test, you know, in order to get the best results. Now, the, the uh, discrimination or accuracy of the machine in the, in the more manual is plus or minus 80 millionths of an inch, okay? So, you know, if you work within a tenth or two, you're doing pretty good. And uh, that's kind of uh, the name of the game. Now, the spindle in the machine, let me see if I can get this down just a little bit further. And I can show that. Let's get that down. Right about there. Now, the quill is considerably longer than, uh, than a standard vertical mill. And uh, a standard vertical mill's bearing arrangements is they'll have a pair of preloaded con angular contact bearings here, then a spherical bearing at this end here. So there's like three bearings in like a bridge port. Now this one has got two angular contact bearings here and plus two angular contact bearings at the tail end. And plus they're under, uh, a lot more preload. So that makes the spindle very stiff. And I think you can see the length is uh, quite a bit longer, a few inches longer than a, than a standard fit vertical mills quill too. Okay, so that's gonna give us an advantage of stiffness and accuracy. Plus the bearings in the machine are grade nine, the very best. Okay. Put that cover back on so I can raise the head with the spider wheel, pull it up, okay. Now there's no power feed to this, to the, to the vertical, okay. Then it's got uh, a quill 
that's just five inches uh, a travel, same as, same as a vertical mill. Okay, so we can uh, preliminary. Oh, I should get into work holding a little bit. And I'll do that. Then we'll get set up. We'll center that hole. It'll take more than one video <laughs> to uh, kind of go through some of the the small things on those. So I'll, I'll take the camera off the tripod and we'll talk about some real basics here. Yeah, okay. Now you see I have this, this work here. I'm gonna just enlarge that hole a little bit. But I have it clamped down. And when you're using a jig bore, you wanna clamp things down uh, more so than using a vise. And I can show you a real quick demo over here. And of course, it's an extreme demo. This is a, a little import um, three inch vise I use on a drill press. And it works pretty good for that. But let's see how much deflection here. I'll get that snug. And there's the indicator. And let's pull it tight. See, that's two thousandths. That's a tenth reading indicator. Oh, look at that still. <laughs> so that's basically why you don't want to use a vise or try to avoid doing that on a jet board machine. Because uh, the plus or minus is less than the smallest discrimination on that at one ten thousandths. Okay. So we clamp things down rather than use a vise. But I do have a special vise for that, and I'll demonstrate that later for at times when you need to use a vise. Now, I got a 15-inch... Uh, more coffee, it helps me shake, I think. I got a 15-inch rotary table on there. It uh, gives me more options of clamping, and... Uh, it uh, it kind of protects the original table from, um, you know, just getting beat up from normal use. This is an old Gordon rotary table, and it's really, really good for this, uh, this job here. So the machine doesn't have a knee, and the table is always supported by the saddle. You can see the length um, is... Uh, longer than the table itself. So the table's always fully supported. In contrast to um, a standard milling machine here, you can see where you have the table overhang. So on the jig board, it's kind of upside down where the saddle's the table, you know, and it's always supported. Let's get back over there and look at that. Now that's important. See, there's uh, never going to be any sag on this machine. And also there's no adjustment for uh, angle on the head. And that's really important too, because the machine is always in trim. And uh, that's uh, something that I found that's really nice I can count on. Um, I've had this uh, mill uh, or this jig bore along with regular mills and you could just always count on this thing, the spindle being true with the table. So if you're going to uh, present uh, work to the spindle, you have to, uh, at an angle, um, you have to do it uh, with work holding. And I think uh, I did show that uh, rotary table that I mount uh, Harley Davidson uh, cases on for repair. Now, this machine here has made me a considerable amount of money. And uh, uh, for some reason, they seem to get bad mouthed. You know, the, uh, there's one guy on the internet that uh, claimed uh, he used one as a drill press and they're obsolete and stuff like that. Well, that could be. But uh, it, it is still a machine that is used in tool rooms and uh, places like that. So it. Uh, you can get uh, easily uh, plus or minus one ten thousandths accuracy every time. 
but it takes the other machines too. I have uh, uh, gotten quite a bit into uh, the cutter grinder, which I consider an essential machine to go along with the jig bore. So I will uh, continue to center that workpiece, put uh, a boring head in, and bore that. And I'll go through the steps. Okay, I'm going to load this video, then I'll, uh, I'll do the next one and uh, go through all the little steps um, to get a good looking hole. Okay, bye.